Flight Desk. I'm Peter, and today I'm going to show you some tips and tricks you can do with the generic spectrum transmitters you get in the uh, Radio Fly packages of Horizon products. So many of you guys probably actually have these things, but don't really know that it's actually capable of a lot more than it looks like. After doing some digging around, I found out you can actually reverse some of the channels in this transmitter. You can also do one VTEL mix in it. But firstly, I'm going to show you that you can actually bind these to normal spectrum receivers. So first things first, you're going to need a spectrum uh, setup. Uh, I just have a normal AR600 receiver. You need a bind plug. That's pretty self-explanatory. Put them in there. And the uh, battery data slot. And now to bind, you're going to go and plug your system in. You're going to press down and hold on the left stick. Turn it on, you're going to get this really annoying tone. Just let go after a few seconds. And there you go, that's how you bind it. So you can actually operate normal servos with this too. And many of you guys are wondering, what is this useful for? Well, this is a limited range transmitter, so don't try to fly any big aircraft with it. I'd say limit your range to around 200 to uh, 300 feet, no, no greater than that. So the next thing I'm going to show you is how to reverse channels. Now this is actually really cool too, because if you're building like a, a little rover or something, and the channels just aren't right, or if you build a little airplane out of the normal spectrum receivers and you need reverse channels, you can actually do that. Let's say I want to go up. So I'm pulling back on the stick, but this is moving down. I don't want that. So how I'm going to do this is I'm going to go and plug my system. Turn off the transmitter. Now here's the fun part. It doesn't tell you which if it's normal or reverse, so you actually have to just press the combination of the buttons and turn it on. So it's moving the wrong way, so I'm just going to hold the uh, the uh, up trim button. And it, uh, these correspond to which channels you're reversing. So this cor corresponds to this channel, which is the elevator channel. So I'm either going to hold this button or that button and turn it on. So I'm just going to try it up here first and see if this works. So I'm going to press down and hold this, turn on the radio. Now you're just going to wait for a few seconds. Actually, it's kind of a long a bit of time. And you'll hear that weird, that weird beeping tone. That means the channel is now either reversed or just still in the same spot it was. I'm going to plug this back in. Hey, look, it's moving the right way. So now I'm, now I'm pulling up, and you can see the control surface goes up. Now, mind you, these are horrible examples of control horn installations, too. So do not glue your control horns in like that because they don't go in like that. This is just a hilarious afterthought. Now, the last thing I'm going to show you is this weird VTEL mix that you can get in this. To do the VTEL mix, I'm going to hold down this button, which is the um, down trim button, and the right aileron trim button. So these two right here. Now, to do that, I'm going to hold them down and turn the transmitter on. Now you're going to wait. And it's going to do a series of beeping tones again. Now we're just going to, go to plug the system in. Now, this is kind of interesting. I haven't figured out how to actually reverse these channels yet. Even when I try to turn off the transmitter and reverse them one by one, they still don't seem to work. So if you do build it with the VTEL mix, you have to put your servos in the right way because you can't actually reverse them, which is just bizarre. Let's see, this would be up and down, and this would be left and right. As you can see, they're not moving correctly though, so I'd actually have to mechanically reverse the control surfaces. One cool thing I want to show you is this. This is actually, and if you're wondering what this is all about, I'm actually cosplaying as a character uh, named George from the short film Paper Man. I actually really like that uh, that short, and if I actually were to go to cosplaying, I actually have to build a small version of this, like this, because I'm not going to walk around all day carrying this. This does not fit in my pockets, as you can see. But this does. Now, in case you guys are wondering, I'm actually going to publish the plans for this. There's going to be a PDF and a DXF that you can possibly download, and that, be, that way you can cut it out yourself. Or if you want, you can just get the faceplate and drill it into any surface you want. Because actually, this is a really simple transmitter on the inside. And actually, I'm going to open this up and show you pretty much what's in here. Okay, so once you take the transmitter apart, this is pretty much all that's inside. This is why I actually really like these things. It's just a simple little board with a little spectrum modu uh, module there. There's really not a whole lot to it. You basically need to feed it six volts through the power lines here. There's your antenna, your 2.4 antenna, and then you have the gimbals and all your trim buttons. That's basically all there is to it. And you can basically put these in any cases you want. That's why I provide the free template there. If you want to take this and drill these holes into a, lo a little metal box and make your own little transmitter, you can do that too. So if you guys want to build this, I provide the PDFs already. So you can pretty much just see how it goes together. It's actually a very self-explanatory process. I'm just gonna go and open this up here. Inside, you see the same transmitter there. Basically, how this is done is that there's a little uh, 20 millimeter screws here, and I use the standoffs to mount this to this faceplate here. I'll go and take these off so you can actually see the whole thing. So 
as you can see, there's the inner workings of the transmitter. Pretty much the exact same thing going on right here. Now one thing I did too, is these gimbals are a little bit obnoxious, so I actually caught these little brass discs just to fit over the top of the gimbals. Just like that. Another thing too, if you do this and use the, the template I give you, you're gonna need to cut down this switch. I actually started cutting it, but then I broke the switch off, so I actually had to replace it. This is your mode selection switch if you're doing mode one or mode two. But since these transmitters don't have centering sticks, you can't really do anything with the mode one on this specific US version. I'm just take the faceplate and slip it on. I need to stick the LED through. I should probably actually glue this in, but just for now, it's just kind of floating in there. Now, when you guys do put screws to mount this thing, use only these screws up here, from here and here. Don't use the ones down here, because if you notice, there's actually pads on the board, and if you were to bridge this, you'd be making a connection in the circuit that I'm not really sure where all these components go to, so that could be a short. So don't use these screw holes. Just put the bolts in there and use the back spacer, but don't screw anything to the top. Now, if you guys are wondering too, the way I did six volts for this is I didn't use the normal uh, double A's. I used to use triple A's, and since I was too lazy to get compartments, I simply just soldered to the cells. Uh, I don't really recommend soldering to the cells too much unless you got a really good iron and you kind of soldered on batteries before, because you can't overheat them and damage the batteries. So basically, just feed it with six volts any way you find that fits for you, and then you pretty much have it. So this just goes back in a case like this. And for the gimbals, I actually took apart the original. Spectrum gimbals, you can use these two, these sticks. They just need to be uh, drilled out just a little bit to fit on these little splines. But I took them and I I want something brass because it looked a little bit cooler. This looks a little bit more circa 1940s, 50s-ish or so. With all the wood stuff and all the wood grain and whatnot. And these are just 22 shells. There you have it. it works for me, it works great with my cosplay too because I can put it in my pocket and I can walk around all day and carry this thing and not even know it's in my pocket. So, if you guys got a bunch of these dumb uh, four channel spectrum radios sitting around that you're not doing anything with, uh, try it out. See what you can make out of them. Because if you can just give them to your kids if they want to build a little rover for a science experiment or something like that, and you just need a cheap, economical transmitter with limited functions, try it out. So, we'll see you guys next time.